So it's okay if, okay. Hello everybody. My name is Bob Calvert. Uh, some of you may remember me from many years ago. I was the founder of Talking With Heroes, H-E-R-O-E-S.com and what is now be, have become our nonprofit, thankyouforyourservice.us. I spent six years going back and forth to Iraq and Afghanistan filming, have over 500 videos on YouTube, raw footage. And I've been told so many times now, as the numbers keep growing on YouTube, which is amazing to me, the content doesn't exist anywhere else. Apparently most of the media never thought going on missions with the troops and filming everything that was happening was news. Uh, close to 700,000 people seem to feel like that. So, but anyway, I haven't been able to do anything for a long time. Health caught up with me, my age, and I'm not going to go into that. But about, I don't know, four or five months ago, I found this podcast and I watched it. And I thought, wow, this lady is really good at being a podcaster. And I've been watching her podcast every week. And if I can't make it that Tuesday because of a medical appointment, I go back later and I watch it and I put my comments and I'm sharing it just like it was my own program. Her name is Amanda Huffman. She's an Air Force veteran and she also is a military spouse. She, her husband is still active duty, I believe, United States Army. She has children. Space Force. Space Force. Huh? How many? He's in the space. My husband's in the Space Force. Is he, here? Is he here in Colorado? Uh, no, we're in L.A. Oh, okay. I'm in Colorado. Anyway, um, so... I have two when, boys, when, when, yeah. When, yeah, when Amanda said to me, Bob, would you be interested in doing an interview with me? My first thought was, gosh, I haven't done this in six years. But I want to read what you wrote me, okay? She said, I bet it is like riding a bike and it will come back quickly. So here I am. I want to introduce you all to Amanda Huffman. And Amanda, if you could start talking about your time in the military. Yeah. Thank you so much for the introduction and for all the support for the podcast. It has meant so much. I know that you're always watching and that you're commenting and it, it means so much to me. So I'm really excited to do this. But I served in the Air Force for six years. I joined the Air Force in 2007, and I left in 2013 when my first son was born. So now he's already 10, which is crazy. But I was a civil engineer. That was what I got my degree in. And I went to ROTC. And then when I graduated, I commissioned into the Air Force as a civil engineer. My first assignment was at Holloman Air Force Base, where the F-117 was being retired and the F-22 was coming. So there was a lot of construction and excitement happening there. And then I got to go to Afghanistan for a year with the Army. And then my husband went to school in Ohio and I was able to follow him. And I worked at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base doing energy reduction management. So when were you in Afghanistan? I was in Afghanistan from February of 2010 to October. I was there. I was Isn't there it cool? I know. I was there twice in 2010. I, I went in Iraq first, and everywhere you, they would take me, I would take it, go on missions, film, and get back to Kuwait, try to get over the heat from Iraq, and then go into Afghanistan. I made that trip twice. Yeah, awesome. all those videos are where this video is going to go very soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So tell me why you picked civil engineering and maybe how you applied that on your career, so, especially in Afghanistan. So my, my husband asked me this past weekend, do you remember this person? And I was like, oh, yeah, he's the reason I was a civil engineer. So I, I really loved math and science growing up, but I didn't know what you could do with math and science. And so... I was going to school to get my degree in math and I went to the open house to learn about ROTC and one of the cadets there talked to me. He was an electrical engineer and he's like, you don't want to do math. That's like math theory and it's not like hands-on applied math. You should do engineering. And he was like, electrical's really hard. Civil, you should just do civil. It's the best. And I, 
I didn't do like any research and I just was like, okay, but I also loved civil engineering once I started taking the coursework and learned more about it. And so I, I feel like I should have done a little more research, but that's why I became a civil engineer. So what army unit were you with in 2010? I deployed as part of a provincial reconstruction team. So I, they were known as PRTs. So, yeah. yeah, so I was on a PRT and we were in Kapisa, which is pretty close to Bagram. It's east, west, one of those directions. <laughs> I should know uh, Bagram and north of Kabul. And we were there doing construction projects. And so we were attached to an infantry unit that was a part of the South Carolina National Guard. And so that was our experience over there. Okay. Most of my trips outside the wire were with PRT teams, including in Bagram. Um, you'll appreciate this then. One of the videos that's gotten the most views was on a mission in Kabul. And so we're driving through all these communities with the, the donkeys and you name it. And you can talk about that too in a second. Um, and I'll never forget it. Uh, we weren't supposed to stop at all, right? So yeah. we left where I was did the filming, and so we're cruising along in these SUVs, all, all the armor and everything, and everything stopped. And I'm, you'll hear it in a video. You'll, I'm sure you'll appreciate this. And it was just a simple little accident in the middle of the road, and then we were by. So do you know what I'm talking about then with writing an emission in Kabul? Yeah. 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 Especially the, like yeah. you're not supposed to stop. And then the convoy stops and you're like, wait, what's going on? We once had a truck that got stuck yep. in like a ditch somehow. And like it was sideways and it was luckily in a relatively safe area. So we, we just had to like add the tow hit kitch and I didn't do any of it. I, I just stood around and watched, um, but it was really it was crazy, yeah. So you're listening to the soldiers in the different vehicles talking, right? Yeah. Saying, no, you can't stop. We have to keep it. We have to get around. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is fascinating. Okay. Um, so you left the military. Why? I left because I was about to have my son. And being deployed to Afghanistan was really hard with my husband being active duty and me being active duty, that was really hard. And so we made like a pro and con list of like, should I stay in the military? Should I get out? And there were a lot of reasons to get out of the military and not really a lot to stay in. And so we decided that I would get out of the military. I likely would have deployed six months after my son was born. And so that was like a huge weighing factor. They've changed the regulation and now you get a year at home. Um, so that, and the maternity leave was six weeks and now it's 12. So I think those two things could have changed my perspective on like deciding what to do. But at the time it was like, I would have a baby and then I would probably leave for six months to a year. And I, I just didn't want to do that. Okay. How many children do you have now? I have two boys. Two boys. Okay. Yeah. And what is your husband's name? If you okay saying that? He's it's Michael. Michael. Okay. So how long has he been in now? Seventeen years. Almost eight almost eighteen. It'll be eighteen this summer. So he's close to retirement. Yep. Yep. Well, along with other people watching this, thank you, Michael, for your service to our country. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost yeah, there. Almost there. Okay. And so you left the military, had your children. When did you start your blog? I started blogging about six months to a year after I left the military. I started with a group of ladies who were doing this thing called Five Minute Friday. So every Friday they'd throw out a prompt word like, sunshine and then you would write for five minutes anything you could think about uh related to that word and that kind of like sparked an idea to start writing and i did that and 
the blog slowly grow grew over time because my son was less than a year old so I'd find like five minutes here or there and try and make it all work and then I just would find more time to write and then yeah just kept sharing stories about motherhood about being in the military and I didn't know what I was doing but I've learned a lot since then <laughs> I understand that I had no idea what I was doing when I started either so at yeah. some point, what you converted from or the blog to a podcast, or are you still do, are you doing both? I still have my blog, but it's primarily summaries of what happens on the podcast. Every once in a while, I get guest posts from people, or I'll write a story. But I do a lot of freelance writing, so that's where most of my brain energy goes for writing other stuff. But I switched from blogging to podcasting in. 2019 so i had started collecting stories of women in 2018 and then we we moved across the country from la to virginia and i was really overwhelmed with trying to get all the stories and my friend was like why don't you just do a podcast and so i said sure let's try that and then exactly. i started working on it in October of 2018, and then I launched it in January of 2019. Cool. Well, I've listened to a lot of your podcast, just so people will probably repeat this again. You're on Tuesday mornings, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and you're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter too, right? Yeah. Okay. And before we go off the air, let people know how they can find you. Okay. Yeah. All I, can, all I can say is that every single program I've listened to has been awesome. The stories are incredible. And do you want to talk about maybe some of the guests you've had on, maybe Darlene or others? Yeah. I mean, there's over 270 podcast episodes. Wow. Um, I started doing them with video, I think, in the last year. It hasn't been very long. So a lot of them are just audio interviews and you can find them on like Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And then I also upload them onto YouTube. So I'm on YouTube, but I don't run them live because you can only use three streams on StreamYard. So that's why it's on LinkedIn, Facebook and Twitter. And so I, um, I've got to interview one of the first women who made the rank of general in the Air Force, General Wilma Vaught. And so she actually came to my house when I lived in Virginia and sat at my kitchen table and we got to do her story. Nice. And she deployed to Vietnam, uh, not as a nurse. She was like a comptroller. And so she deployed and told us about her experience of being in Vietnam at a time when very few women were there and especially women who were not nurses. And so that was really cool to hear her story and just hear her advice and, and the challenges that she faced of like men not wanting to serve under her. And then really early on in the podcast, I had the chance to interview, Oh no, Deborah. Now I'm blanking. Uh, she was the uh, secretary of the air force. And I don't know why I can't remember her last name, but uh, she, I met her at her book release and we were able to connect. And then she was on the podcast and just her wisdom. She never served in the military. She only worked on the civilian side, but she just had such a unique perspective and she worked in the government sector, then worked in the private sector and then got, you know, asked to be the secretary of the air force. And she just brought so many things, I think, to the Air Force that were pivotal changes that needed to be made just from using her private sector experience and tying that in with the, her past government experience. And so she was a really great guest. And I mean, I've got to do so many cool stories. I've read so many books by so many different, you know, veteran authors that it's just so inspiring to hear all the stories. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Just from what I've listened, I just started listening 270 episodes. That's quite a lot. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about any of the other women or actually you've had a general on too, a male general bipolar? Yeah, I had him on. 
Uh, he talked about his experience with bipolar disorder, and that was just really interesting. And I really wanted to talk to him because uh, mental health is so important. And so I've talked to a lot of people about, you know, PTSD, military sexual trauma has been a topic that we covered. Um, and we just, I just think mental health is so important to talk about. And then just recently, I did a solo episode way back, episode 47. So it was in the first year. And I did an episode about how uh, when I left the military, I really grew grieve the loss of my military service. So I went through the five stages of grief in that episode and talked about how I specifically went through, you know, the the loss and like the anger and then like, you know, the coping. Now I can't remember exactly what they all are. But in the last week, I got an email from a Coast Guard veteran and he told me how much he was struggling with leaving the military. And he found that episode and he was asking for more resources and more support, but he was said that he didn't feel so alone. And so I guess that episode, I wrote, I did it, you know, years ago, over five years ago. I haven't really, it didn't have the greatest response, but then it touched someone's life in such yeah. a way that like he was really struggling and he needed someone to come alongside him. And so I guess it's stories like that. You hear these stories of like, how the podcast impacts people and it's ways that I've never expected. And so, I mean, I can't pick a favorite guest because they're all so great, but those stories are so impactful to me. Yeah. I remember, I think it was one of the first I listened to Darlene, a Navy commander. Was it 26 yeah. years of service? Yeah. She's very interesting. Um, you started talking about mental health. Do you want to talk more about that, your mental health journey? Yeah, so I I have, uh, I've just recently in the last year been rated with PTSD from the VA and went through the disability claims process. And I was surprised by the results um, that I got because I always have this like imposter syndrome that, you know, I, I didn't do this enough or that. So do I really have uh, PTSD? But I've gone through one-on-one -on -one therapy. I've done group therapies and um, I have I have all these tools like meditation and other things that I use to help me in my life. But I was really struggling when I left the military because of the loss of purpose, but I also was dealing with the trauma from the deployment. And for me, I think it wasn't really the combat. It was some of the things that people on the team did, like spreading rumors and lies. So my mental health challenges came a lot from being betrayed by the people that I served with and how that impacted me. I just did, I think, is it this week, the moral injury episode came out. And uh, that I think is where like a lot of the trauma came from. And when I was talking to Jamie about moral injury, I was like, oh, that's why it impacted me so much because these were the people I was going off base with who were supposed to protect me and then when you're inside the wire on base, yeah. they're stabbing you in the back. And so I've had to work through a lot of forgiveness and, you know, letting go and, and learning to trust people again. And so that's been really impactful for me. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie talking about that was really moving. You could, you could tell how she was talking. She was very emotionally attached to what happened to her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I remember doing interviews inside the wire and I'd hear people telling me, well, there's no reason for you to interview. I'm not really doing anything, right? What I'm doing is not worth it. And I would tell them, I'd say, everybody has their role. And if you just take a few people out of that, it could cause chaos. Everybody supports each other, right? And so I did some pretty good interviews with that. My daughter, by the way, was in the army and um, she never got deployed though, but she said some of the same things. And I told her, I said, what you did was very important. Every, anybody that puts their life into going into the military, right? Or first responders, firefighters, right? Whatever their job is, whatever they're doing, it's all important. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the people on the front lines can't do what they're doing if they're not getting taken care of. Like, Exactly. I interviewed a, 
personnelist and she was like, I never went off base, but, and I was like, yes, but you made sure we got paid and you made sure that like we were taken care of and we couldn't have done our job if we weren't, you know, if our families weren't taken care of by getting paid and um, all the things that we needed to do. Yeah. So what do you have planned next? Some of your Everyone programs. keeps asking me this question, like, what do you have planned next? Um, I, I take the summers off, but I don't stop the podcast. So I actually could tell you like all the episodes because I, uh, I have a few more to record and then I'll have the whole summer uh, ready because my kids are eight and 10 and they still like me. And so we have <laughs> summer plans to go exploring together. And so I am planning on re-releasing the series that I did in March on Women's History Month because I did that just live and they were extra episodes that I haven't actually put on the podcast yet. So those will be coming out again. And I have got to interview someone who was in the Canadian Air Force. And so I'm excited to share her story and talk about what her experience was like and there's more stories of women. And then I have a few like other random episodes that are more special episodes that I did just for the summer. So there's a lot more fun to come, but um, I'm kind of just gearing up for summer because yeah, my kids are like so important and that's why I, you know, work from home and have a part-time job so that I can spend time with them. And so I'm gearing up for that. And then in the fall, I'll, I'll kick it all off again and, and figure out what's next. Yep. My world is God, family, and everything else. Yeah. So my grand, my two youngest grandkids are nine and 11. And I, oh, hope, so I'll spend, I hope I'll be able to spend time with them this summer. It's really important to do that. Take trips. I've noticed you're taking some really neat trips. It's important. You yeah. Know, every, everybody's having fun. Yeah, last year we went to Catalina for a Christian family camp and there was no cell phone coverage and it was the best week and we're going back again. So I'm really looking forward to that and just getting to do more stuff with the kids. Yeah, there's a group up by Denver called Project Sanctuary. It was my daughter and son laws first experience with going to a military support event and it's a whole week and it's camping and it's the whole family. You sound like you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Heather. Heather is the lady that started it. Okay. So what else would you like to talk about? Uh, I mean, I think, I think one of the things that you mentioned before we started was how you watching my show inspired you that you should like start sharing it. And now you're doing this interview. So I guess I want to like tell veterans and, who are watching like you can do something like so tiny it can seem so tiny but it like really has an impact you're supporting me i'm sharing these stories and like we're working together and collaborating and i don't when people tell me that i inspire them i'm like really i i just doing my own thing but it's really cool that we you can do something that something you love and you're passionate about and then see all these ripple effects of like how it's affecting other people so follow your passion, do that thing. Even if it only impacts one person, that's one person. And that, that really matters. Yeah. Especially with suicide prevention. Yeah. One of the emphasis we're going to have when thank you for your service comes out is building a coalition, something that I'm told has never been done before. Like we planned and suicide prevention will be big a part of that, not just for military and veterans, but young people too. Yeah. losing too many young people so yeah. yeah for sure yeah yeah okay. that's why mental health is so important right exactly okay well when the website's ready you'll be able to register uh, women in the military and pick any categories which you in your case there'll be a lot of categories just check all those boxes and when you come back in and log in you'll be able to uh upload just like you're doing with social media you'll be able to upload it into our site and it'll be seen on our site and all the categories you've picked 
And I That's think it's awesome. very, yeah, I think it's very important what you're doing. I really do. I also think it's important what you're planning for this summer. Got to take time for family. Yeah. Yeah. So important. So important. Do you want to do a sign off or are you well, done? One of the things I've always done on all my programs, I didn't always do them on the missions in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's just things are happening all around me. But I've always liked to end programs with a shout out to our troops. Okay, if you want to, both of us do that. Um, I'll start if you want. Okay, to all of our men and women who are serving right now around the world, and maybe many of you are actually serving right now in an area that you could be in harm's way. All I can say is thank you for your service. Thank you for all your families back home and be safe, stay alert. God bless you. And to all of our veterans, all of our, fir our first responders, you know, be safe. We thank you for all you do to keep us safe. Yeah. And I, I just want to add that I think sometimes it can feel really lonely when you're, you know, in those dangerous places because so many Americans have no idea the sacrifices our military is making. But we, those of us who are watching and paying attention, we really thank you for what you're doing. And, you know, the people who don't know what you're doing, they appreciate you too, even if they don't actually know what you're doing. But uh, it, it's so important to protect our country and just to do the work that you're doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the program. It's an honor. And no thank problem. you again for you and your husband and your children, because they're serving too. Thank you yeah. for service to our country. Keep doing what you're doing.